Grace and peace, amen. We thank God for your viewers on this morning. You are watching New Harvest Word Empowerment Global Ministry. So glad to see you. We're uh, coming out of the, the vibrant city of Baltimore, Maryland. Amen. Somebody give God a shout at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, and you know, Kelsey, you. We're so glad that you're here. We ask you that you get up out of your seat, get up out of your bed, amen, and begin to give God some praise, amen, on this morning, for he's worthy of the praise, amen. Yes. Here we are. We're going to start off this morning with a hymn. Hallelujah. Can somebody say a hymn? A hymn. Because we came to praise him, so we're going to start off with a hymn. I can't get no help here. All right, come on, everybody, and you share with me as we go forward in this song of today. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. If you know the words, Thank you, Lord. I want you to sing with us. Amen. That sounds like a contemporary version. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I am 
my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Come on, here we go. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Come on and give the Lord a praise, everybody. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on and magnify his name in here. Look at your name and say, this is my story. This is my song. Come on, praising my Savior. Somebody say, all the day long. Somebody give him a big shout right here. Come on, give him a big hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for allowing us to be here on this lovely day. And I don't know about you, I'm just glad to be here. Somebody say, one more again. One more again. And I don't know about you, I'm excited that the Lord has allowed me to see another day. Amen. Since the last time we saw you, many folk have gone home. Yes. Since yes. the last time we saw you, many folk have died from COVID. Yes. Since the last yes. time we saw you, many folk have been involved in all kinds of massive shootings. Yes. Since the last time we saw you, Saw each other, people have gotten sick and gotten ill. But look at somebody and say, But God kept me. But God kept me. Well, y'all ain't said it like you mean it. I say, Come on and say, God kept me. God kept me. Amen. We're so excited that you're here today. And we give God glory for all the things that He has done. Amen. And, and we want to just give God some praise for what He's doing in our lives. Amen. And we thank God for all the things that He has already done. I dare you slap somebody five and say, he's working it out. He's working it out. Oh, come on, y'all didn't do it like you meant it. Come on, come on, slap somebody five and say, he's working it out. He's working it out. Now somebody says, he already worked it out. Amen, amen. We're in the book of 2 Kings, I believe, where we the fourth chapter and beginning at the 18th verse. Amen. We're in the book of 2 Kings. The fourth chapter and beginning at the 18th verse. Amen. Second Kings, the fourth chapter and beginning at the 18th verse. Amen. If you have it, say amen. I need you to stand on your feet just for a few minutes. Amen. It is a very long passage of scripture. Amen. And I'm not going to be able, due to the time, to read all of it to you. But I do want to do some of it. And then I want to take you down to the end. And we're going to go from there. We're going to start off at the 18th chapter. In fact, just to just to, to, to give the, the, the context, we're going to back up to the 16th verse. Okay. Let's make it 15. We're in 2 Kings, the 4th chapter, beginning at verse 15. And you have it, say amen. amen. And it says, and he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. He said, about this season, everybody say, about this season. About, about this season. season. To the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Yes. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elijah said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out with his father to to the I'm sorry, as it and the child was grown, and as it fell on the day that he went out to to his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. Look, somebody said, Some things only mother can hear. Some things only mother can hear. He sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid on him, uh, laid on him on the bed that the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of 
uh, there it is again, one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And when he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Ah, God, help me here. My God. Then she sat on the ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slap not thy riding from me, except I bid thee. Ah. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her after afar off, yeah. that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is the Shumanite woman. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, It is well with thee, it is well with thy husband, it is well with thy child. And she answered, It is My well. God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. I want to use for a topic on this morning. I want to use for a topic on this morning. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I wonder if anybody here can get excited because you need a miracle. Yes, yes, I don't know yes. about you, but stuff going on all around us, with stuff happening in and out of our country, stuff happening in and out of our state, stuff happening in and out of our city. Look at somebody and say, I need. I need a miracle. miracle. Y'all ain't getting excited in here. I said, tell somebody I need, I need a miracle. Let me hear you shout yes. 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 Amen. You may be seeing the presence of the Lord. As we begin to embark on this passage of scripture, we're going to find that here, uh, uh, the, the woman of God needed something from God. And I don't know about you, but maybe I'm the only one in this room who's ever needed something from God. Maybe I'm the only one in here who's ever needed God to do something that the doctor said couldn't be done. Maybe I'm the only one in here that needs the Lord to do something that the financial said could not happen. Maybe I'm only here that needs a God to do something that that, 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 that the people said couldn't happen because of your credit or because of your disposition or because of your color or because of where you came from or because of what you've been going through for the last five years. Uh But I looked and came today to tell somebody. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I'm only talking to a few folks. I know some of y'all, it's time early. You can't get excited this early. Yeah. But I came with some fire yeah. to let somebody know that I need a miracle. Is that you, Shia? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, God. Then he began to go to the 15th verse of chapter 4 of 2 Kings. Let me say it properly, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 15. You will find that here we have a lady, a Shunite lady. And in the lady, she has a history with the man of God. Look at somebody and say, you got to have a history with God. And see, when you don't have a history with God, I don't mean God having a history with you. I mean you having a history with him. See, when you have a history, uh, when he has a history with you, that's because before you was, he was. Yeah. He told Isaiah, he said, before when you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. So God already knows who you are. God already knows what you got. God already knows what you don't have. God even already knows what you need. That's but right. you need to have a history. Let me change the word. A relationship. Come on. Yeah. With God himself. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody here that said, you know, my relationship's been a little dragging. My relationship's been a little slow. My relationship's been a little slack. Look at somebody and say, you can renew your relationship with God. Somebody shout, I need, I need a miracle. A miracle. Uh, 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 brother, brother Jonathan, you probably don't want to hear that knows what it's like to need a miracle. You probably don't want to hear knows what it's like to really been asking God to do something, and then finally God did it. I don't know about you, well, Brother Aaron, you probably know in here that, that, that knows what it's like to finally get to a place where you can see the love of God and be displayed and displayed to you. I don't know, I don't know, Brother Brandon, you probably don't want in here that only knows what it's like when all of a sudden now you got a family. I can't get no help here. I don't know, Kyle, maybe you don't want to hear that knows what it's like to be in a place where people love you no matter what your disposition is. I don't know if you're talking to myself, but look at somebody say, I need a miracle. A miracle. My God. The first thing I want you to know is that this lady, assumed that woman, had a history with the man of God. And if you read further back at the beginning of this passage, you will find that she, watch this now, she noticed him by his lifestyle and she observed and said he must be a man of God. Yes. Yes. I'm going somewhere where people see you, they are to see in your makeup. They are to see in your conversation. Yes. They are right. to see in your character. That's right. 
right. that you got a relationship That's right. with God. That's right. I'm just talking to myself. Because we got too many folk that only have a relationship with God. Y'all ain't going to talk to me on Sunday morning from come 9 on, to 12. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. We have a relationship with God only when stuff is jacked up from the floor. Come we have a relationship with God when we can't figure out what's going to happen and we take it into our own hands and mess it up. But look at your neighbor and say, I need I a need miracle. A miracle. She had a relationship with God. She noticed by his character. She noticed by the way he moved through the city that he must have been a man of God. Yeah. And she was a wealthy woman. They were wealthy people. And, and God used her to say that I'm going to set aside a room for the man of God. And every time he passed through, he'll have some way to lay his head. And so she gave him a room. She gave him a table. She gave him a chair. She gave him a cup. And she gave him a bed. That's another message all by itself. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. When the cup, the table, the chair, and the room come together for God's purpose. That's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. But what I want you to understand is, is that she not knowing that she needed something from God, she took care of the man of God first. Y'all didn't hear me? And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about everybody around you. And when you got a man of God, a woman of God in your life, you have to make sure that you do all you can yes, to help them. Right. So when you need them, they can help you. Yes, Look, somebody Lord. say you got to help somebody. You got to help somebody. If you want some help. If you want some help. So notice here, she made a room for him. And, and as we read here in verse 15, he saw that the woman had money. He saw that the woman had clothes. He saw that the woman had chariots. He saw that the woman had land. He saw that the woman had service. He saw that the woman had a good working husband. Let me say it again. He saw that the woman had a good working husband. He saw that the woman uh, was a lady about her business and she wasn't about gossiping. She took care of her service and she took care of people in the city. But there was one thing that the woman didn't have. Come on. See, some of us, we put, saw, we put on a facade and we put on a front of face like we got it all together. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Who's your name? Say, everybody, everybody needs something. Oh, so y'all looking at me crazy? Come on, come on. See, here's come the funny part. What I might need for me may not be what you need for you. On, what I might need to fulfill my life might not be what you need to fulfill your life. But look at your name and say, God knows what the one thing that you need is. Look at your name and say, I need a miracle. Look at what he says here. So, so he called her to the side and he said to her, he said to her in verse 16, he said, woman of God, by this time next year, he said, due to the time of season, you're going to give birth to a son. And uh, I want you to know that although she had not displayed that she wanted a son, deep down inside of her, she had said to herself, I wish I had a son. Ain't nobody gonna talk to me here. Hallelujah. And some of y'all listening right now got stuff that you saying deep down inside yourself. God, I wish you would help me do this. God, I wish you would deliver me from this. God, I wish you would give me joy in this area. God, I wish you would strengthen me in this area. God, I wish you would help me turn this thing around. And you ain't told nobody. But I stop by to tell you, God knows the one thing that you need. Look at your name and say, I need a miracle. Look what happened here. So it says here that, that, that she he, he told her that this time next year you're going to have a son. Now I want you to understand her reaction. Her reaction was not rejection. Her reaction was that, hey man of God, now I know you are who you say you are because you spoke the one thing that I never told nobody. Anybody here got some stuff that you can't even tell nobody? Anybody here got some stuff that nobody knows? Anybody here got some stuff that you need God to do inside of you that you can't even tell nobody? But look at your name and say, hey. He says to her, he says, you're going to have a son. And her response was, no, 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 my Lord. In other words, you picked the one thing that, 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 that nobody else could know but God. And I stop by to tell you, we serve a God who is able to show you the one thing and to fix the one thing that you need. Even if everybody else say you're looking good and everybody else say you got it going on and everybody else say y'all doing well. Who's your neighbor? Say, I need, I need a miracle. A miracle. He says here, he says here, he told in verse 16 that she's going to have a son. 
And she said, no, Lord. What she was really saying was, please. And she even said, she said, please don't play with my emotions. She said, please don't play with my feelings. Please don't play with who, uh, uh, what's really inside of me. And y'all got to get this. Watch this. It wasn't that she couldn't have a baby. It was that she needed the man of God watch this, to speak it into existence. I'm only going to talk to a handful of y'all in here. Because I understand that something you will never have until you speak it into existence. We spend too much time talking about what we don't have. God, I'm going to have the house. God, I'm going to have the car. God, I'm going to have my spirit restored. God, I'm going to get my praise back. God, I'm going to get my joy back. God, I'm going to get my love back. God, I'm going to get my children back. God, I'm going to get my peace back. Somebody say, speak it. Speak it. I need a miracle. You know what it says here? In verse 16, he told her, she said, please don't play with my emotions. Uh, there was a song out that said, uh, 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 don't don't play with my emotions because my emotions are too frail. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Yes. And if you ever want to mess with somebody, especially a woman, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Mess around and play with her emotions. Yes, Lord. Come on. Tell her you love it. She catch your love in Susie. Y'all ain't going to hear me. Look at what he says here. Look at your name and say, I need a miracle. Look at verse 17. So what he says here, he says here, he says that in verse 17, he says, and, and the woman bared the son. Listen, whenever God says that you're going to be who he says you're going to be, look at somebody and say, I'm going to be it. Some of us got to take the detour route. <laughs> some of us take the express route. And some of us take the country road route. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. The detour route is when I know what I'm supposed to be, but I'm going to do what I want to do until I get tired of doing what I'm doing. That's the detour route. So let's take the express route where we say, Lord, here am I. Send me out. Go. I wish I had about 10 folks who could just say, Lord, here am I. Send me out. Go. I need a miracle. And then we got the ones that want to take the country road. It'll get there. But you go through the singing route. You try to tip through the tulips while you're trying to do what God called you to do. But I stop by to tell somebody, say, neighbor, I need a miracle. She conceived and she had a son. I want y'all to get this. God has already put inside of us what we're supposed to give birth to. Yes. So we can conceive uh -huh. and be what he called us to be. Yes. I dare you look at somebody and say, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. This is my now me. My now but me. there is another me coming. Another That's what God said I was going to be. Oh, y'all can't get no help here. Look at your name and say, you saw me when I was down. Yes. Don't get mad when I come up. Don't get mad when I praise up. Don't get mad when I show up. Don't get mad when God bring me up. And for those of you who are a little more technical, in other words, nine months Jesus. from now. <laughs> because there is a time period in which a woman's supposed to carry a child. Uh -huh. Sometimes they come early and sometimes they come late. But sooner or later, I'm looking at somebody and say, they do come. Verse 18, verse 18, look at what he says here. He says, he says in verse 18, he makes it plain. He says, and when the child was grown, now I want y'all to get this because whenever God does something, that he promised you he's uh -huh, going to do, uh -huh, uh -huh. amen, hey! he allows it to grow. My God, thank you. Here's where it gets a little dicey here, because whenever God does something for us, we very quickly forget that he did it. We uh -huh. very quickly forget where we were. Uh -huh. We very quickly forget how we got to where uh -huh. we were. And then what he gave you does not grow. All right. Jesus, come on, All right, my Lord. So you were anointed as children. And now that you acknowledge, you acknowledge your anointing and got a five minutes of fame, and then your anointing didn't grow. My Lord, my Lord. Some of you were 
gifted and talented to do certain things for God and do certain things in the ministry. And after you got to the plateau where uh, they, they all know I can do it, uh, you stop growing. Come on, Jesus. Even if you're good and you're a musician, you should always want to advance your craft. You know, going to talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Don't be satisfied just because I can play in any key. But you got to learn how to play them hymns. Amen. Y'all ain't talking to me. You got to learn how to play transition. Amen. From loud to soft. You got to learn to know when the Spirit is telling you to play this chord and when the Spirit is telling you to play that chord. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Just because you're gifted don't mean that's the end of it. You got to grow. Because you can preach and you've got your license, amen, and you are now a licensed, ordained preacher, amen, doesn't mean that it's the end of your growth. You've got to study and you've got to fast and you've got to pray and you've got to trust God and you've you got to believe God for all that he's doing, amen. In other words, you need to grow. So notice here in verse 18, look at somebody say, you need to grow. And I don't mean grow in your size physically. I mean grow in your spirit spiritually. I don't mean grow in your negative attitude. I mean grow in humility. I don't mean grow in trying to be the smartest person in the room. I mean grow in trying to be the quietest person in the room. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Look at your name and say, I need a miracle. So the Bible says in verse 18, oh, I'm feeling good now. So the Bible says in verse 18, it says that, that, that when the child was grown, in other words, when God had already fulfilled his promise to the mama, the child was grown. I want y'all to know the danger here that whenever you think you've grown, that's when stuff starts happening. Mm -hmm. Whenever uh -huh. you think you've grown and you, your britches didn't got too big for you, that's when stuff start happening. Yeah, amen. My good. daddy used to say, uh, don't don't you don't let your mouth write a check. Come on. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't be nice because my daddy won't say that your behind can't cash. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. <laughs> and my daddy was serious about that thing. Amen. So much so when I was 14 years old, I decided I was gonna write a check with my mouth that my jaw couldn't cash. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh-huh. I stood up to my daddy at 14, amen. Man, and me and my daddy going around the living room I'm tagging him, he's just looking And before I knew it, my daddy came out The right side with the left hand And knocked me across the room I didn't even know my daddy was left handed, amen Because normally A left handed man wears his watch On the right hand but my daddy was left-handed and wore his watch on the left hand. So I thought he was right-handed because his watch was on the left hand. But after he smacked the taste out of my mouth, amen, and knocked me out of one shoe, amen, I realized that my daddy was left-handed. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And I was standing there saying, I need a miracle. <laughs> Y'all looking at me crazy. Look at your neighbor say, I need, I need a miracle. Notice what happened here. So, 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 so he fell down, and after you're grown, write this down, after you're grown, that's when stuff happens, amen. After you're grown, that's when stuff happens, amen. And you got to understand, the first thing I told you, that you got to have a relationship or a history with God. You got to have a relationship or a history with God. Notice here uh, uh, in verse 18 that it says that after he has grown, and this is after this, the fourth point, after you have grown, things happen. Uh -huh. Because Satan will only attack you, watch this now, when you are confident that everything is under control. Jesus. Uh -huh. Whenever you think everything is under control, look at somebody and say, look out. Look out. Because he's coming. Unlike us, Satan is a calculated foe. He's the kind that will sit back and let you think that you got it all together. Yep. And then try to pull a rug right underneath your feet. Uh -huh. Look at somebody and say, I need a miracle. Need a miracle. Verse 19, yeah. verse 19, I'm rolling through it and I feel real good about it. And he said unto his father, Father, my head, my head. Now, now, Nick, we don't have any proof as to what it may have been, but I believe in this time and day, given the, 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 the growth of medicine, I believe he had an aneurysm in his head. And you know, whenever you have an aneurysm and you have a cloud or something in your head that's pressing against your skull, amen, it creates that kind of pressure. Yeah. And they didn't have Marcus Welby and Trapper John, and they didn't have University of Maryland and John Hopkins. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. All he had was what he felt in his body. Yeah. And so he said, my head, now the father, who was a working man, he also was a wise man. Yeah. Yeah. See, a wise man knows there are some things I can fix. There's some things I can build. 
There's some things I can tear down and put back together again. But a wise man is not a man who can build. A wise man should know when it ain't in his ballpark. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna talk to me. See, y'all gotta get it. Y'all gotta get it. Y'all gotta get it. The father understood that this was something that mama needed to have. Amen. I can't Amen. get no help here. Have you ever had a problem and you couldn't talk to your daddy and you ran to your mama? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You ever had a problem where your daddy was too hard and too coarse and mama had to come by and put a little smooth on top of that? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You ever had a problem where uh, daddy tried to make you something that you not because he don't want you to be like he don't want you to be and mama had to put a little grease on it and slide it along? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. So am I? man is the kind of guy that recognizes this is not my arena. This is not something I can handle. So the daddy being wise right here, he said, carry him to his mother. Mm. Y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. Because what that meant was, not only was it out of his arena, but he understood that mama had the sensitivity to deal with what was going on. Y'all ain't talking to me. It meant that he could trust mama to handle his son in this area. It meant that he could trust mama to have the wisdom of what to do with him. God help me here. That's what we need in this world today. We need a lot of men that have wisdom to know when to get in and when to get out. We need a lot of men that have wisdom to know when to hug and when to fight. We need men that have enough wisdom when to keep their mouth shut and when to speak up. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Look at your name and say, we need a miracle. We need mothers in the house that know when to, to be humble and when to be nice. We need mothers in the house that know when to love and when to care. We need mothers yeah. in the house that know when to stand up and protect. Yeah. We need mothers in the house that know when to push their husbands forward rather than kick them down to the ground. We need mothers in the house that know when to encourage the man as opposed yeah. to abusing him by what he is not. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Look at your neighbor and say, we need a miracle. So he says, send her to her mother. Verse 19 right here simply says, stay in your lane. <laughs> Look at your name. Say, neighbor. Stay in your lane. Come on, look at somebody. Look at somebody and tell them, hey, stay in your lane. If you're a 40 mile driver, stay to the right. If you're a 70 mile driver, stay in the middle. If you drive like I do, stay on the left lane and stay out of my lane. I ain't playing with you, okay? All right, y'all looking at me crazy. Look at what he says here, stay in your lane. Let's go to verse 20, I'm almost done, but I'm feeling good now. Yeah. Look at somebody say, yeah. yeah. He said, and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon. Got this, look at this. When he came to his mother, watch this now, his head was still hurting, but he knew he was in the right place. My question is, do you know that you are in the right place? Oh, yes, Lord. Okay, it's going to get dicey here. You know how you know when you're in the right place? Come on. This is how you know. The first thing you know you're in the right place is, number one, you get peace. My God, thank you. You better say so. That's right. You get peace. Uh -huh. That's how you're in the right place. The second reason you know that you're in the right place is, watch this, you can rest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm the kind of guy, I can actually sleep anywhere. I can sleep in a tree. Amen, I can sleep in a truck. I can dig a foxhole and sleep down in the dirt. I can sleep anywhere. But I can only rest when I'm near my baby. Amen. Don't be hating on me. 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 I can only rest when I'm with my baby. You know why? Because I know that while I'm resting, she ain't gonna cut my hair off. Oh, y'all talk about Delilah. Ooh, I, 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 I know that while I'm resting, oh, she's not going to inject something in my arm yeah. and cause me to act funny. Y'all ain't going to say that. Come on. I know that while I'm resting, if I get some sweat on my brow, she's going to take something and wipe it off so I can continue to Come sleep. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I know that when I'm resting, that if I get cold, she'll throw the sheet over me yeah. and make sure that I'm warm. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Come on. So what you got to understand? That what he said was that now that I'm near my mother, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yes, Lord. Here becomes the problem. A lot of us go a whole lifetime 
not being or feeling like we are where we're supposed to uh -huh. be. Come on. You ever been there? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you're going through these situations, you say, God, I know this ain't where I'm supposed to be. You ever, you ever said that to yourself? Yes. Or said it out loud in frustration while you're walking away or while you're driving away or why somebody just said something mean and nasty to you or why somebody did something to you that they shouldn't have done or something that just didn't make no sense and all you could say was, Lord, I know yes. this ain't where I'm supposed to be. Yes. And inside, you was really saying, I need a miracle. Yes. That's right. Look yes. at what he says. He stayed there until noon. And watch this. And then... He died. Jesus. Here's where I want to deal with the, 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 in the crevice of this message and in, 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 the, in the deepness of it because what do you do when what you need God to do appears to have died? Oh, oh, oh. Jesus. Something to think about. What do you do when, with all of your doing and all of your skills and all of your ability and all of your knowledge and all of your resources and all of your of your talent, but yet it died? Now here's where we're going to learn how a miracle is birthed. There's three things how a miracle bursts. The first thing is, write this down if you can, a miracle is birthed in this way. The first thing, it has to be a situation that is one, bigger than you, and two, you can't solve. Okay, so number one is, the miracle, the first re, uh, re, re, prerequisite for a miracle is, it has to be bigger than you and uh, something that you cannot resolve. I don't know about you, I've had stuff in my life I've tried to fix, and I couldn't fix it. I can recall I've lived at least 34 years of my life trying to get a relationship that would work, and it didn't work. I needed a miracle, and I can say, I got it. How you playing with y'all? Look at what he says here. So the first thing is that it has to be something that is bigger than you and you cannot resolve. So here in, in verse 20, we notice here, here's where the need, the request, the prerequisite for the miracle took place. Okay. Now keep in mind, this is the son that the man of God prophesied and gave to her that she didn't ask for, but she wanted. Yes, yes, yes. So in verse 21, in verse 21, in verse 21, it says, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Now I'm going to tell you this, because see what happens is here's where we have to really dig into what getting our miracle is. A lot of times, and I probably don't ever experience this, there's times where you just don't feel God. Amen. Come on. Come on. That's the truth. Y'all can sit here and act like, you know, right. praise the Lord, I feel God every day, right? Yeah. Every week of the moment, he's always speaking to me. Well, I'm sorry, but that ain't true for me. Amen. It have been in our times in my life where I know I'm saved. I know I'm doing right. Amen. But I just don't feel like God is saying that. Amen. I know I'm going to do the right thing, but God, I, I, don't, I don't hear you saying that. Amen. And so here, the woman was in a place where she knew that this was a child that was given to her by God through yes. the man of God. Yes. And I want you to notice what she did. She took the child back to where he came from. You yes, better sir. say so. <laughs> right she said, it was, it was the man of God that gave me this child. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this child back to the place where he was prophesied to me. Yes. Now, if you read the story, uh, he was in his room, in the same room where he prophesied to her she was going to have a child. So she took the child back to where he was prophesied by the man of God. Look at your name and say, why don't you just go back to where you felt him last? See, sometimes, sometimes you got to forget about what 
what you've been through yeah. and go back to where you felt it last. You know how when we used to be holy rollers, you know how when we used to give God the praise for everything. You know how we would thank God for everything. You know how we would pray about everything. You know how we would fast about everything. You know how we would stand up for Jesus for everything. Yo, you know how we used to be we first got saved and we first got Holy Ghost filled. It's all about Jesus. Why don't we go back to what we came from to get through this day? I'm preaching a whole lot better than y'all praising me. Look on. what he says here. He says here, and she shut the door. Come on. Hey. Uh -huh. Listen, I say, shut the door. Shut the door. When you shut the door, what you say is, okay, God, I need a miracle, but this is out of my lane. This is something I can't do. So I'm giving it back to you. I want y'all to say, I want y'all to understand that what she didn't know she did, she preserved his life. By shutting the door. My God. Oh, my there are some people whose lives you're going to preserve by shutting the door on them. Oh, my God. Stop babying them. Yes. Stop letting them have their way. Yes. Stop saying, well, that's just the way he is. No, 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 no. Shut the door. Yes. Amen. Come on. Amen. You're grown now. Yes. Yes. Why should I still be putting up with this nonsense? That's right. You still living in my house. Oh, come on. Come on now. Y'all ain't gonna like me through here. Grown does not mean I'm still living in my parents' house and I'm still driving their car. Come I'm on. still eating their food. Come on. Ain't gonna say Come on. That's not grown. No. Amen. Come on. Inside of the word grown is the word own. Amen. Come on, Jesus. So you ain't grown until you got your own place. Amen. You ain't grown until you got your own car or a bus pass. That's right. Amen. Well. <laughs> Our youngest daughter, when 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 she got on her own, uh, Sydney, when she got on her own, uh, and she became grown, she started realizing that oh, whoa, 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 they made it look easy. It ain't, it, it, it ain't, you know, it, it, it's a balance. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to let your children learn the balance of life. You can't keep giving to them and giving to them and say it's going to be all right. No, 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 no. You have to let them go out there and learn and survive on their own. Yes. I know y'all don't like me to hear. All of our kids got their own place because you're not staying with us. Amen. Well. <laughs> we didn't work too hard and wait too long to be by ourselves. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh -huh. Look at your neighbor and say, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Don't misunderstand if they had a hard time. My daughters can come home for 30 days. My sons can come home for two weeks. That's it. Amen. I'm going to help you, but you're getting up out of here. Yeah. Look at what he says. Look at your name and say, I need, I need a miracle. Look at what he says. I got to say, somebody just got mad. Let me tell you what. When you give them that expectancy, guess what? They try not to come home. Amen. You got to say it. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at what he says. He says, and so she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God because that's where he was prophesied at. That's where he was spiritually birthed at. That's where the remnant of the Lord was residue in her house. So look at what she did. She took the dead child to the, the, the lonely bed that had the residence of the prophet on it. And what she don't know is she resuscitated his lifespan long enough for her to get to the man of God. Come on, come my on. God my head. Hey, That's what prayer on. does. Prayer, hey. prayer yeah. will make you resuscitate something that's dead. Yeah. Prayer yeah. will make you resuscitate something that the enemy said won't go happen. Yeah. Prayer will make you resuscitate the very thing that the devil said you will never have. You will never be happy. You will never have a family. You will never be at peace. You will never have a place to sleep. You will never have a car to drive. Prayer resuscitates that thing which the devil allowed to die. Yes. Look at somebody say, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Look at what it says here. And so she resuscitated him by putting in the bed where the residue from the prophet was. And let me tell you about residue. Whether y'all know it or not, residue will attach itself to you and you not even know it's on you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try it this way. If you get down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. Okay, y'all. Okay, maybe y'all maybe y'all ain't from the city, y'all don't understand that terminology. But what it means is, whatever you attach yourself to, some of it will attach itself to you. 
Yeah. And so she was smart enough to know that I'm going to put him in the bed where the residue or the anointing of the man of God is present. Yes, Lord. Who's somebody say, I don't care what happens in my life. The anointing of God, anointing of God is, present is present in me. In me. Somebody shout yeah. yeah. Look at what he says here. He says, and then she shut the door. In other words, God is your thing now. Verse yes. 22, verse 22, verse 22, he says, And she called unto her husband and uh -huh. said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, there's that word again, uh -huh. that I may uh -huh. run to the man of God uh -huh. and come again. Yeah. Now, here's where the second requirement is. The first requirement was that it has to be something that is greater than you and you can't solve. Yes. The second requirement for a miracle is you must exercise your faith Against the odds. My God. Who's your neighbor say exercise your faith, your faith against, against the, odds. the odds? Now, what is the odds of the fact that number one, the boy has died? Now he's been dead now for about two hours. Yes. She didn't know he was sitting in the residue of the prophets. She had to ride. I'm sure her husband had some horses and he had some stallions, but she said, I'm gonna take an ass. Uh-huh. And I went into the scripture. Why? Would she choose an ass when she could have took a horse? Because it said to me in my spirit that that meant she had a long way to go. Oh Watch God. this. Horses need rest. Hey. <laughs> Asses run till they drop. <laughs> you got a thing, bro. I can't hear nobody in here. I said horses need rest. So you all watch. Uh, a stagecoach, and you watch uh, 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 Bonanza, and you watch Big Valley. Come on, you watch. They always got to stop and rest the horses. Y'all ain't talking to me. But old stubborn ass, amen, he'll just keep trotting along until you say stop. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And I wonder if we got any folk in here who just stubborn enough to be a Holy Ghost ass that they're going to just keep running to see what the end going to be. The something said, I believe I run on to see what the end will be. I'm not going to stop for no rest. I'm not going to stop for no water break. I'm not going to stop for no stretch. I'm a people of Yes, sir. So she chose the ass over a horse because the horse would need rest. <laughs> Look, somebody say, I need a miracle. Look at what he says here. He says here. And so she told him, she said, she, and she, here's the part I want you to get. Remember I said it requires you to have faith against the odds. Notice the last little tidbit of comment she slid in. She said, and come again. My gosh. Sound like, sound like, sound like Abraham when he said, me and the young lad, we're going up to sacrifice. And we're coming back. Again, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Hey. He knew that he was supposed to sacrifice his son, but he trusted God enough that even if I had to kill him, God would resurrect him oh, and I'm coming back down the mountain with my son. Is there anybody here that can say, I trust God enough that if I lose everything, I'm gonna get it back again. If I lose everything, I'm gonna get it back again. The doctor said, you gotta take it out. God to heal it again. Everything 
that the kangaroo and the pommel has stolen. Come on, somebody say, I'm coming back. With a new fire. I'm coming back. With a new strength. Yes. <laughs> That's right. 
there comes a time we're trying to be fashionably correct. Uh huh. Is out the window. Come on, that's right. See, when, when your life is on the line, and your child's life is on the line, and your mama's life is on the line, and your daddy's life is on the line, and your life is on the line, you ain't got time to be putting on no mascara and no makeup and, and having the right wig and having the correct jewelry. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You ain't got time to make sure you got the seamless bra and the seamless panties and the stockings. Come on, you ain't got time to do all that. When it's time and it's dip down to the get down, and when the rubber meets the road, you ain't got time to be cute. You gotta sound that. Y'all looking at me Jesus. crazy. We got too many people still trying to be cute with their friends. Hallelujah. You better wake up in here. We're in a war right now. We're in a situation That's now. Right. Even as we speak, we need to be crying out. Let it run. Yes, Lord. Let the mascara run down hey. your face. Let it drip all on your clothes. Yes. We need to be giving God praise. Hallelujah. You better Don't expect so. your 200 $300 suit up, man. Don't yeah. sweat up your... Look at what it says. So she, so, so, so she said, I ain't got time to be cute and prissy. She said, she said, I, I, I'm going to straddle this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. And then she said, she told him to drive. She said, look here. Look here now. She said, I don't want you to slow up because of me. My wife says to me all the time, she says, we got this little thing. When we get ready to go to church, we go somewhere to see who get dressed first. <laughs> because, you know, I'm normally the fastest dresser because I don't have as much stuff to do as she does. But every now and then, like today, she, she will get dressed and say, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> In other words, she said, don't, 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 don't slow because of me. <laughs> Let's get to where we got to get to. And so what she was saying was, what the lady was saying was, the showman woman was saying, that just because I'm a woman, and normally women don't take hard ground, and she said, look here, my son's life is on the line. I'm going to straddle this ass right here. I'm going to hold him in my arms. And I don't care, because you know, uh, uh, horses have a stride. They have a rhythm. And they rhythm in such a way that they're, they're, too, uh, they're too left, the two right sides are always in the front stride. Mm -hmm. And the other side is always in the hand stride. Come on. And animals have a stride that makes their gallop easy to articulate and get a rhythm so you can get a smooth ride on a bumpy transition. Y'all didn't hear that. Jesus. Go ahead. Y'all didn't hear that. Come on, come on. So somebody say, I need to learn, I need to learn. how to get a smooth ride, a smooth ride. on a bumpy transition. Bumpy That's a whole other message right there, Brother John. That's a whole other message right there. Uh, uh, so, 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 and the difference with a donkey, a donkey doesn't have the syncopated strides of his paws. Okay. So every one of his paws hit the ground independently. Oh. A horse has a rhythm. A donkey. <laughs> because every paw hits the ground yeah. independently. Oh. So she was saying, I know had we rode the stallion, the glide would have been easier. But the fact that we're on the donkey, it's going to be a rough ride. Come on, Jesus. Yes. And see, here what it is, is when you need a miracle, before the miracle occurs, you're going to have a rough ride. Rough ride. Rough ride. Okay. Say it. Say it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Before folks see that God's really going to do what he said, they give you a rough time yeah. while you're having a rough ride yeah. in a rough situation. Come on. But I just want to tell somebody that if I can articulate how to stimulate my faith while I'm going through a rough ride, yes, yes, yes. my rough ride has what I call an expected end. Yes. You know how after you go through the hell you've been through, you look back and say, Ooh, I thank God he brought me through. Yes. Anybody ever had to say, I thank God for bringing me through? I thank God for turning around? All you got to do is say, neighbor. Look at what he said. She told him, she said, uh, uh, don't slap because of me. She said, ride this thing. Ride it. 
All right, let's move. Look at what he says after that. He says, so she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel was the, the historic place where uh, uh, his, his teacher, uh, Elijah, stood up there with uh, 450 prophets and proved to them that God was God. So naturally, when he's not uh, roaming about performing miracles, Elisha, he will go back to his resting place where the anointing sits. And here's what you got to do. You have to have a place where you recognize where the anointing sits. And instead of being idle, you need to be sitting under the anointing. Yes, sir. And that's why the choice, the place where you choose to go to church, that is important. That's why the place that you, the man or woman of God, you sit under is important. Yes. Because if the anointing is there, you can rest there and have yourself filled. Yes, yes, yes so Lord. So when you're not near yes, them, Lord. you still have the power of them yes. to on. accomplish and overcome the rest of them. Yes, <laughs> you better go ahead. Who's somebody say, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. So she went there, and as she was coming, the Bible says that Elisha saw her a way off. Uh -huh. I want you to get this. Please don't miss this part right here. God sees me. That God sees me coming. And what that means is he's able to see you coming before you realize that you got to get going. My God, that's what he Look at somebody and say, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Look at what he says here. So he says here, he says to his servant, he says, Behold, yonder is that sure night woman. Uh -huh. Verse 26, look at what he says. So he says to him, he says, I want you to go out to her. Verse 26, so he says, I want you to go out to her and greet her. And I want you to ask her, is all is well with you? Is all is well with your husband? Is all is well with your son? Yeah. And so he went out, the servant went out, and he asked her those things. And then, and then, and then what happened was, he said, uh, she said, look at her answer. She said, all is well. Yes. I want y'all to get this. <laughs> it takes a whole lot of faith yes. when what you trust in God for is dead. Come on, to be able to say in the face of death, in the face of defeat, in the face of sadness, in the face of grief, in the face of being broken, sorry, in the face of what's going on, it takes a whole lot to be able to say, all is well. I need just about a lot of y'all in here to prophetically, futuristically speak into your future and raise your right hand and say, all, all is well. Is, is that it must be uh, bigger than you and something that you cannot solve. Number two is, is that you have to have the faith to overcome it even though it's dead. Yeah, my God. Uh-huh. And number three is, you have to take it to God and leave it there. See, in the old days, in the old days, God didn't show up individually to people like he does for us. He would normally, and 99.9% .9 of the time, he would speak through a prophet, woman, or man of God. Most of the time, he would speak through uh, someone who he has appointed to carry the mandate of the season for the children of Israel. And so, it was imperative that she understood, since God don't speak to us like that, I need to take it to the man of God and leave yes, it there. Yes. Here's where I'm going to close right here. And that is, uh, are you willing to bring your dead thing to God? Yes, my Lord, yes, yes. Are you willing to say, God, uh, 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 it's bigger than me and I can't solve it. Yes. I'm willing to have faith in the face of being dead. But now the final step is, I need... To give it to you. Did it die? I got a few seconds. It's about to go out. All right. How many seconds? I got? Watch me close up real quick. Look at what he says right here. I'm going to go into the hypo mode. And I'm going to close this thing out real quick. You got to be willing to give it to God. And to say, Lord, I need a miracle. And the Bible says that why she had already been riding on an ass for two days. Because she would have rode the horse. 
from the horse when he need rest. But sometimes you don't have time to stop. Amen. The second thing is that you have to realize that you have to have faith 
even when it looks like it's dead. And then the final thing is, is that you have to release it back to the God that gave it to you. Say amen. Amen. I'm going to need some help here from my wife. Amen. That's why I thank God for a good wife. Amen. She can help me when I need help. And she helped me when I don't know I need help, but I need help. Amen. Amen. That's right. And she helped me when I need help. I know I need help, but I don't want no help. Y'all look at me. Right. Sometimes I need a miracle and it's sitting right next to me. Amen. 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 I say to her all the time, girl, you just don't know. You saved my life. Yes, Lord. Thank Amen. you. Amen. I'm grateful to God for the miracle that he gave me. Amen. And my wife. And she struggled with the miracle. Y'all give me another one. Somebody pop one back there. Amen. 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 She got it? Amen. I'm just going to. I'll do that with y'all. And then for those of you who are at home and you're watching and you're going to commune with us, let's pray, God. We thank you, Lord, for this bread and this wine, that representation of your body and your blood that you gave and you broke for us. And we give you glory that you shed your blood for the remission of our sins, that we may be able Lord, to have the right to the tree of life. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, the Bible says that on that night when Jesus betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which was broken for you. Take me, eat ye all of it. All right, grandson over there. Likewise, he took the cup, and after he sucked, he said, this is my blood that was shed for you for the remission of sins. He said, drink ye all of it. And the Bible says that they went out in the Mount of Isles singing praises. And I don't know what they were singing, but I just want you to know that, that you have a miracle that's on the way. And we thank God for you being with us today. And if this message was a blessing to you, amen, and you want to show so into the ministry, there's three ways you can do it. One way you can do it is we do it by Give Lafay. You can look New Harvest up on Give Lafay, and you can sow into New Harvest through Give Lafay. And then the second way we do it is, is uh, we have a cash out if you want to sow into this ministry and help us do what we do to help the situation, help the land where we are. You can go to New Harvest Word, and that's our cash app. And then the third way is you can do it the old-fashioned way. You can mail it to 2 North Carey Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. And remember, you need a miracle, and God has the miracle waiting for you. So we love you. We thank God for you. And if I change you here in this word, I've been a blessing to you and it made you realize that you need a miracle and you need God in your life. But I want you to do, unless you're driving, I want you to raise your hands right where you are and say, Lord, come into my life. And I may accept you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again. And remember, your miracle is on the way. Come on, give the